This is the intriguing tale of Samantha Josephson. Let's embark on a journey to New Jersey, the setting for Samantha's narrative. Nestled in the northeastern corner of the US, New Jersey may be perceived as modest in size, but it's a bustling hub to nearly 9 million inhabitants. Its diverse economy thrives on the pharmaceutical, biotechnological, financial, and technological sectors, earning it the title of the highest density of scientists per square mile. But New Jersey also embraces those who cherish a more rustic lifestyle, contributing significantly to the production of blueberries, cranberries, spinach and peaches. And for the trivia buffs out there, did you know that 180 million years ago, New Jersey's shoreline was neighbours with South Africa? Nestled in the heart of New Jersey, sandwiched between the metropolises of New York and Philadelphia, you'll find the quaint town of Princeton. It was here, in 1998, that Samantha came into the world, the cherished daughter of Marcy and Seymour Josephson, and a beloved sister to Sydney. The family foursome would continue to reside in the nearby township of Robbinsville. Samantha and Sydney's upbringing was as normal as any. Both sisters were enveloped in the warmth of a loving family. Fast forward to 2015, Samantha embarked on her academic journey at the University of South Carolina, focusing on political science. Here, she blossomed, establishing numerous friendships and falling head over heels for her boyfriend, Greg. Their paths crossed in 2017 at Five Points, a student hotspot. Samantha engaged in the Alpha Gamma Delta sorority, and her college years were enriched with travel experiences in Barcelona, Madrid, and Paris, with her sister joining her on at least one occasion. Samantha had a magnetic charm. It may sound cliché, but her friends consistently described her as a beacon of light. Her vibrant personality was coupled with ambitious dreams. She intended to graduate in May 2019 and then set her sights on Drexel University to pursue international law. However, before she transitioned to Drexel, she still had some cherished moments left at USC. As 2019 dawned, Samantha was in her senior year, a few months away from completing her major and a few more from creating unforgettable memories with her friends. The clock was ticking for Samantha and her friends. It was mid-March, and with final exams looming, everyone was immersed in their studies. However, being seniors, they were also on the brink of parting ways, prompting them to squeeze in as much time together as they could. As for Greg, there was no need to worry. He had graduated a year earlier and was comfortably settled in Mount Pleasant, a mere two and a half hours away. Despite the miles that separated them, Greg and Samantha shared a bond that seemed to defy distance. United by their love for sports, they often cheered on their local team at football games. They enjoyed revisiting Five Points, the neighbourhood where they first crossed paths, to indulge in food and drinks. Even when they were only minutes apart, they found solace in video chatting daily. As Greg would say, they were inseparable. Greg's move didn't douse their shared energy. Their daily conversations continued without missing a beat. March 28, 2019, however, cast a shadow over their vibrant connection. Samantha, grappling with distressing news from home, was in low spirits. She implored Greg to come back to USC for some much-needed comfort. But with prior commitments and their planned meeting just a few nights away, Greg suggested a night out with friends to distract her from her troubles. After all, they could still text and maintain contact through their screens. They even utilized an app called Find My Friends, which allowed them to keep tabs on each other's whereabouts for peace of mind. Samantha conceded, and the stage was set for a night of drinks. As the clock struck 12.30am, Samantha and her friends stepped into the Bird Dog, a beloved haunt nestled in Five Points, Columbia. The bar, a hot spot for USC students, buzzed with music and lively chatter over inexpensive drinks. But amidst the vibrancy, Samantha's gloom was palpable. She often retreated to the corners of the bar, engrossed in messaging Greg and others on her phone. Despite their best efforts, her friends couldn't lift her spirits, and she eventually lost them in the crowd. Feeling alone and disheartened, Samantha decided to call it a night. Just after 2am, 
she informed Greg that she was heading home. Living a few miles northwest on Main Street, an Uber would ensure a safe journey back. A surveillance camera captured Samantha on the phone with Greg at 2.06 a.m., her virtual company as she awaited her ride. At 2.12 a.m., her supposed Uber pulled into the disabled bay, the black Chevy Impala barely stopping before Samantha clambered into the back seat. The car pulled away, captured by surveillance cameras as it headed south, southeast on Harden Street. But Greg quickly sensed that something was amiss. Tracking Samantha via the Find My Friends app, he saw her moving in the opposite direction to her home. Frantic calls, texts and even Snapchats went unanswered, unread and unseen. All the while, her location veered further from her apartment. Samantha reached the Shandon neighborhood, then Rosewood, and at 2.40 a.m., 28 minutes after her Uber ride, vanished off the map. Greg reached out to Samantha's housemates, but they too had drawn blanks. Perhaps Samantha had made it home but left her phone in the Uber by mistake. With this hopeful thought, they retired for the night, expecting to hear from Samantha in the morning. But the morning only brought prolonged silence. Samantha, due for a morning shift at Liberty Taproom, was a no-show. Alarm bells began to ring louder for Greg and Samantha's friends. Samantha was missing, her last known location heading in the opposite direction to her home. By 2 p.m., a missing persons report was filed with local law enforcement. Meanwhile, Greg and others launched their search, calling nearby hospitals and jails and scouring five points, but to no avail. Their focus then shifted to the bird dog. Greg, granted access to the bar's surveillance footage, spotted Samantha outside shortly after 2 a.m. The mystery surrounding Samantha's disappearance deepened, leaving a trail of unanswered questions and growing fears. The search party offered their footage and testimonies to the local police department, recounting the chilling tale of Samantha's vanishing act. But shortly after their statements, they were ushered into a secluded chamber. Samantha's parents awaited them, their faces etched with grief and despair. Greg, a member of the search party, broke the silence. Long time no see, but the heavy sorrow hung in the air like a thick fog. The hunt for Samantha Josephson had reached its tragic end. She had been discovered dead merely hours earlier, a distressing 65 miles southeast of her last known location in Colombia. The horrific details of her brutal attack and the countless puncture wounds decorating her body were too gruesome for anyone to digest. Samantha's family, friends, and especially Greg, were engulfed with heartache. What Greg had unwittingly witnessed the previous night was the abduction and murder of his girlfriend. As the cold reality of Samantha's fate slowly sunk in, a chilling question began to surface. Why? Why was Samantha Josephson no more? It was clear that she had been murdered, but who could commit such an atrocity? What could be their motive? Thanks to Greg and his friends, some initial leads had been established. They had tracked her last known location the previous night, with CCTV footage capturing her sliding into an Uber just past 2 a.m. Another friend had unearthed an unsettling revelation. After hacking into her laptop and perusing her emails, it became clear that the Uber ride she was supposed to take that night had been cancelled by the driver. Samantha had never made it to the right vehicle. It appeared that the car Samantha had entered was not her intended ride. In a tragic twist of fate, she had unknowingly stepped into a stranger's car. These clues provided the police with a promising starting point. From the get-go, they had a location, a time, a potential suspect, a direction, and most importantly, a vehicle. While the driver may not be directly involved in her murder, they could be crucial in retracing Samantha's final journey. Further scrutiny of the surveillance footage revealed the exact vehicle lingering around the area. Alarmingly, after spotting Samantha alone, it made a deliberate U-turn before picking her up. This seemed like more than just a casual coincidence. It had the eerie undertones of a deliberate act. Consequently, all nearby officers were alerted to be on the lookout for a black Chevy Impala and to carefully scrutinize any driver found at the helm. They didn't have to wait long. At 3.23 a.m. on the 30th of March, 
Just 26 heart-wrenching hours after Samantha's disappearance, a police officer named Jeffrey Kraft, accompanied by his canine partner, spotted a similar vehicle in front of him. The location was less than a quarter mile south of the bird dog, making the vehicle a prime suspect. After tailing the Impala for a few minutes and then flashing his lights, the driver veered into a residential road and pulled over. What unfolded next was, well, you'll have to see for yourself. All right, man. Who's smoking the marijuana? I had smoked some earlier, sir, when I was at home. All right. All right, man, you're going to have to step on out, man. All right, here's the deal, man. I pulled your car over because it matches the suspect. Get your hand in your pocket. What are you, crazy? Get over here. Hey, get over here. Come on, run. Hey, I'm going to release the dog. I can't. I was just going to see if he'll stop. Bravo, Mike, wearing a gray sweatpants, gray sweatshirt. In a game of cat and mouse, our man Nathaniel Rowland didn't exactly prove to be the slyest fox in the forest. Merely two minutes after his attempted hide-and-seek, the cavalry arrived in response to Officer Kraft's alert, promptly capturing and arresting the runaway. And who was this ill-fated escapologist? Enter Nathaniel Rowland, a 24-year-old with a somewhat murky past and plenty of reasons to be on edge. Born in the year 1995, Nathaniel hailed from the modest town of New Zion, nestled about 65 miles southeast of Columbia. During his formative years, he attended East Clarendon School, showed an affinity for basketball, and was labelled as a promising youngster by his coach. A bright future seemed on the horizon, but his path took a sinister turn. Beneath the surface, Nathaniel's record was far from clean. With multiple traffic violations for not wearing a seatbelt and an open container charge in February 2018, Nathaniel was no stranger to legal troubles. However, an incident on October 19, 2018, would cast a long, dark shadow over his life. Allegedly, Nathaniel was one of two men involved in a carjacking at a traffic light. The woman was assaulted forced to withdraw all her money from an ATM and then driven to her home, where the culprits fled with her belongings, including a PlayStation 4. The stolen items found their way to a pawn shop, and from there, investigators traced them back to Nathaniel. He was charged with obtaining goods under pretenses valued at $2,000 or less. Still, he was not held accountable for the carjacking or kidnapping. The subsequent investigation would paint a chilling picture. Officers found not just a trunk, but passenger seats awash in blood. Samantha's mobile phone was discovered in the glove box, linking Nathaniel and Samantha for the first time. The presence of cleaning supplies like liquid bleach, germicidal wipes, and window cleaners suggested an attempt to wipe clean the vehicle. More incriminating evidence was found in Nathaniel's house, including a two-bladed knife and cleaning supplies all stained with Samantha's blood. Samantha's blood was also on a scarf, a sock, and even under Nathaniel's fingernails. The evidence stacked against Nathaniel was overwhelming. He was charged with kidnapping, murder, and possession of a weapon during the commission of a crime. On July 20th, 2021, his trial commenced. As anticipated, things didn't pan out favorably for Nathaniel. The prosecution presented 31 witnesses including the turkey hunter who found Samantha's body, Nathaniel's ex-girlfriend, and numerous law enforcement officers and experts. CCTV footage presented in court showed Nathaniel lurking in the area as early as 25 minutes before picking up Samantha. He was seen stalking and making U-turns in the area, seemingly in search of a potential victim. Samantha, who was alone and on her phone, mistook another vehicle for her Uber. 
Seizing the opportunity, Nathaniel, whose Impala was just two cars behind, swooped in. Once Samantha was in the car, Nathaniel activated the child locks, trapping her inside. The outside world remained oblivious to Samantha's plight, as loud music and laughter drowned out any potential screams for help. Nathaniel's vehicle was seen moving further southeast, and cell tower pings linked Samantha's and Nathaniel's phones together. As this was unfolding, Samantha's boyfriend, Greg, watched helplessly as her location strayed further off course. A forensic pathologist, Dr. Thomas, revealed that Samantha probably died in the black Chevy Impala and was then transported to the field where she was found. Over 120 wounds were identified on Samantha's body. Just hours after Samantha's death, Nathaniel was caught on surveillance cameras at two Sumter area ATMs, attempting to withdraw cash using Samantha's debit cards. However, all nine attempts proved unsuccessful. Throughout the trial, Nathaniel appeared uncomfortable, scribbling notes continuously, and his discomfort was warranted. On July the 27th, 2021, after just over an hour of deliberation, the jury found Nathaniel Rowland guilty of kidnapping and murdering Samantha Josephson, bringing this grim tale to a close. ultimate horror for any parent, I conjecture, is to encounter the death of their child, an ordeal of unimaginable proportions, especially when it's a sudden, brutal murder. Words fail to capture the gravity of such a calamity. Samantha Josephson, by all accounts, was a beacon of joy and generosity. Her future was a bright tapestry, waiting to be woven with plans to study at Drexel University, and a career aimed at creating a positive ripple in people's lives. However, this promising future was cruelly extinguished by a predatory killer, seemingly driven by the sinister motive of financial gain. Samantha's fatal misstep, which could happen to anyone, was boarding an unrecognized vehicle without verifying the driver's identity. Usually, such a mistake would result in a startled and irritated driver, but in Samantha's case, it tragically cost her life. Following their daughter's abrupt departure from this world, Samantha's parents, in the throes of their grief, founded the What's My Name Fondation championing the cause of Rideshare Safety. To delve deeper, you'll find a link in the description below. On a related note, picturing the terror that must have gripped Greg throughout Samantha's disappearance is harrowing. Using the Find My Friends app for security only to witness your worst fears unfold in real time must have been horrifyingly overwhelming. After losing his beloved, Greg pivoted his career towards criminal prosecution law, intending to honor Samantha Josephson's memory by bringing justice to victims entangled in criminal circumstances. Samantha was finally laid to rest at the Perry Neville Jewish Cemetery in New Jersey. Each year, those moved by Samantha's story participate in a 5K run, paying tribute to a young life tragically, abruptly, and unjustly curtailed. Have you ever found yourself in a situation akin to Samantha's? How do you ensure your safety in such circumstances? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. While there are many more details to this case that I could have shared, it's appropriate to conclude here. 